Hey guys, Homesteading on a Dime has put together this little video for you to show you some of the things you might want to carry with you when you're traveling the backcountry on snowmobile, if you're pushing your own trail, boondocking, or working on secondary trails, uh, you are going to get stuck at some point. And while getting stuck is relatively easy, getting unstuck can be incredibly difficult. So it's a good idea for you to carry some tools with you to help make that process go a lot easier. So while I'm getting this ready to show you, why don't you watch this and I'll be right back. Okay, so if you're ever going off uh, into the boonies, off the main trails or, or groomed trails or anything like that, going off into the backcountry, uh, even if you're with other people, it's a really good idea to have some uh, stuff with you that can uh, help extricate yourself when you get stuck. Getting stuck sucks and getting unstuck can be even worse. And if you don't have the right stuff with you, it's just going to be a mess and you're going to be cussing a blue streak. So what I've done over the years is I've just kind of come up with what works for me. And I'll show you what I do. And then you can just take it from there. You don't have to use the exact same things. I'm just kind of showing you what I keep with me uh, on my machine all winter long. And it starts out with something to carry everything in. And I like these really cheap, soft-sided suitcases that I can buy at thrift stores, garage sales. You pay 2 or $3 for them. You know, it's usually got like a, a minor zipper broken, one of the outside zipper pockets broken, or a wheel's broken. It doesn't matter because you're going to be carrying on the back of the machine. You're not going through an airport or anything. You're only really concerned about the main, the main compartment because that's going to keep everything consolidated and out of the weather. So, what do you want to keep with you first? Well... The heart of the system, you don't do anything unless you've got to come along with you. Now the new machines, the really high-tech four-strokes, you can get those with winches, uh, but we're not rich. We're poor. So we got to do it the old way. And maybe uh, this isn't as fancy schmancy as just hitting a button and uh, letting, the, the, letting the motor do the work. But I tell you what, this will get you out of trouble. And I always take one with me. Second. You have to connect it to everything together. So I start out with these two straps. Uh, these are military surplus cargo straps that were given to me many, many, many years ago. These were, this was actually just one strap doubled up. I took them apart and uh, that way I, I have twice the length and these are more than strong enough to pull a machine out uh, of, of uh, like a stuck area, deep snow or overflow, something like that. I keep both these with me all the time. Okay, that cargo strap's nice, but it's not enough. You're always going to seem to get stuck in the worst place where there's nothing to winch from. So I also keep a good length of cable with me, and it's also got a pulley on it to use as a snatch block. There's not always a tree exactly in line with where you want to go. So a snatch block and some extra chain to wrap around a tree and secure it uh, is a big help. I always carry this with me as well. Now, I have to connect everything together. The cargo straps... I don't like lacing those together uh, to double the length because they cinch down on each other really hard and it's really difficult to get those off without prying something between them like a screwdriver or something. So what I did was, I don't know where I got this, but this is just a short lead for like hauling an, or you know leading an animal around the barnyard like a bull or a, a, a horse or something that's got a bull snap on this end and a quick release snap on this end. This works really great. Uh, for c connecting my two cargo straps together. And I highly recommend you have some way of doing that. Even if it's just to link the chain with a little carabiner on it. I always try to have something like that with you. What else do I got going on here? Oh, speaking of chain. <clears throat> hold on, hold on. I can't find it. Give me a minute. There we go. I was sitting on it, believe it or not. 
I carry a length of chain. This is to wrap around a tree uh, so that you connect the the straps to this rather than flapping the, the, the strap around the tree itself. This is a lot faster. Also carry a couple extra carabiners and linking devices with you available at any hardware store. Just make sure they're heavy enough to get the job done. This one is a little on the light side, but it hasn't let me down yet. Also, if you go through overflow and find that you have a lot of slush buildup in your tracks, you're going to want to try to get that out as quickly as possible. Uh, sometimes it'll freeze up right away. I always carry something to chip that out with. Uh, it, the same thing can happen to the front of your skis too. They can really be weighed down. That might be beneficial at times, believe it or not. If, but uh, most of the time you just want to get that stuff off there. So I always keep like a little crowbar and the nearest hammer type device I can find. I put that in there as well. And of course, don't forget ratchet straps. Lots and lots of ratchet straps. If you're hauling freight sled behind you, more than likely you've already got a bunch on there holding... Uh, your load down, but sometimes due to trail conditions, really bumpy trails, or just a really difficult load to strap down, it may not want to stay strapped down. Always carry more of these with you. Uh, you won't regret it, I promise you. Also carry just some extra rope with you like this. Uh, the reason for this is if you get stuck uh, going uphill, especially with the load, uh, well, primarily with the load, it's really hard to get your machine unstuck with the with the with the sled still on it because it's going to be weighed down with a bunch of stuff and it's going to weigh two three four five hundred pounds who knows uh, carry a length of rope with you tie your freight sled off to the nearest tree because if you try just obviously we just try to unhook it that thing's going to go rocketing back down uh, the, to the bottom of the hill and that might be 10 feet 20 feet 30 feet 30 yards who knows you know so tie your sled off before you unhook and do anything. That'll save you a lot of time rather than having to figure out how to get your sled all the way up to the top of the hill uh, where your machine is. So just tie it off and then you can figure out how to uh, come along it up after you get up on level ground. Now I run two-stroke machines, uh, you know, old school. Uh, the oil is mixed in with the gas. Uh, as you run it as, as opposed to like a, a four-stroke machine that is just just like running a car you don't mix the oil in with the gas every time i top off my tank i top off my oil reservoir as well and i never go anywhere without at least a quart of this you know if you're going a long ways and and you have to top off your tank and you can't top off uh, your oil reservoir, if you run out of gas, that's one thing. You can just put more gas and it'll go. But if you run your oil reservoir out of this, you're never going to get it started again. You'll just burn your motor up. I always, always, always top off my oil reservoir every time I put gas in the tank. Also, especially when you're off the beaten path and you might be traveling at, at odd hours and you're especially when you're by yourself like I am a lot of times I always put heat in my gas and I always carry heat with me uh, when I go in uh, for supplies I always stop at the, uh, the gas station and pick up at least five gallons usually a lot more and I always pick up heat to go with it not the yellow heat you want the red heat this won't eat through gas lines. You really don't want your gas lines uh, being being deteriorated. Get the red heat and always keep some with you just in case. Now, when you do get stuck, and you will get stuck if you're off the beaten path, uh, you should always keep a shovel with you. You can see this one's really cool. It's a uh, really pretty red, and it's got a little, you know, ex extendable collapsible handle on it. And uh, they're about fifty dollars, and they're junk. Don't. Don't buy one of these. Uh, they will probably break on you probably the first time you use them. Uh, I've broken two of them, and fortunately, I didn't have to replace them because they weren't mine, but they were, they're junk. They just really are. They look cool, uh, you know, strapped to the side of those new fancy machines and stuff, but how much snow are you going to move with this? I mean, seriously, you want to move a lot of snow. So if you want to get one of these, you can just keep it where I keep mine, which is over there. Hold on a second. For probably less money, you can get yourself one of these. You go to a hardware store, get yourself a good old scoop shovel. You see this one's been, been around quite a bit. But this thing will move some snow. It's wood and aluminum. It's not going to crack on you like those things do. And you can move a heck of a lot more snow. 
which is what you're going to want to do because you're going to be pissed off uh, when you get stuck. That's just the way it is. Uh, you're going to want to get unstuck as quickly as possible. So why mess around with that fancy schmancy crap? There I said it. Just don't bother with them. The only reason I have that one is because it was part of a, a garage sale, a state sale deal. I didn't pay any money for it. It was just, here, might as well take this too. And I said, oh, okay. For, you know, never say no when someone offers you something like that. You know, I don't, I don't use it, but maybe in some circumstance down the road, maybe, I don't know, probably not, but at least I've got it. But this one always goes with me. Uh, never, ever, ever leave home without it. I've also been in situations where keeping an ax with me was also a good idea for chipping away ice. I didn't uh, bring the ax out. It's over at the, the uh, chopping block, but if you run into a situation where you're traveling uh, on and around water, where you might be running into an ice shelf, you can get to a place. We had one winter where the ice froze up really high. It got warm. Uh, everything melted out except the ice shelf. We had this huge ice shelf uh, that I had to bust through almost every time. And you had just had to build a ramp up through it, and you would not be able to do it without a shovel and an axe. So kind of know where you're going and, and, and what you should expect. I wouldn't say you always have to keep an axe with you, but one winter I did. It was really bad uh, conditions. And if you're in a situation where you're getting close to town, uh, when it snows, of course, obviously the, the plows plow the, plow the road and they'll push up a big berm. The, the trails will begin running right next to the road, like on the, like on the easements. Okay. They'll like the power line easements and stuff. Just, uh, keeping an ax with you then, especially after a fresh snow, you're going into town, you know, it just snowed a few days before. Uh, if you go in after they plowed it, that berm is going to be all hard and crusty and just just to shovel may not do enough an axe would go a long way towards breaking those down that's just kind of a i didn't plan on saying that that's just but that is the truth so there you go uh just analyze your situation always take extra stuff with you to help you get unstuck you don't want to be uh walking back to town and that's another thing i don't have them here because i've been using them snowshoes always take snowshoes with you just in case especially if you're on a, a new fresh trail well, if you're on a trail that's been been run uh, before a couple times, three four times, you're probably not going to break through. But nothing worse than breaking through every, you know, three or four steps and sinking down to your private parts. You know, so carry snowshoes with you. Like I said, even though you're on a trail, you're going to walk back on the trail. It's usually faster than trying to go cross country. Believe it or not, it's a lot faster. Keep the snows with you to keep from from breaking through. And you'll be making really good time getting back to town to get help. So anyway, that's it. That's all I got for you today. Sorry. Uh, it's uh, 28 degrees. Now I'm going to put this all back together. And I'm going to go out and run some of my trails and pack them down so that me and the dogs can continue going on our morning walks and stuff. So anyway, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you uh, thought it was helpful and informative. Hopefully... Uh, you can adapt this to uh, what you're doing and hopefully it'll keep you from getting stuck any more than necessary. And even if you do get stuck, at least you'll be able to get out with the least amount of hassle. So anyway, I got to go. I got stuff to do. I will see you on the next video. Please subscribe. Please like. I appreciate you watching. Bye-bye. Uh, going through some... I can't name my train of thought.